I'd like to say good evening to you and welcome back to Bible Enrichment Studies. Today we want to talk about kingdom leadership as it relates to the pastors, the elders, and the bishops. These men, in my mind, are responsible for training, teaching, living by example. They're responsible for making sure that the body of Christ, the local church, the local congregation, is mature and ready to demonstrate <clears throat> the Word of God and also ready to, to, to work <clears throat> and serve in the ministry, or should I say serve in the kingdom. So as we look at the pastor, the elder, and the bishops, these giftings in the fivefold ministry, they're responsible for maturing the saints so that they can strengthen and build up Christ's body which is the church, and the reason for them strengthening the body of Christ and building the body of Christ up is so that the body of Christ can work the ministry or work in the kingdom. And we, so all, we're all supposed to be about kingdom building. It's about building the kingdom of God. It's about <clears throat> witnessing and ministering to those that are lost. It's also about helping to mature those that are not mature, help those who are moving along the way uh, through their ups and downs, ins and outs, helping them to be whole, helping them to be restored. There's so many things, there's, there's so much uh, that's required when it comes to shepherding and teaching and coaching uh, the people of God. And so we must understand that, as Paul told Timothy, we've got to make sure that we uh, have ourselves in place, or should I say, we, we've got to make sure that we're hearing from God. We've got to make sure that God is using us, that we're obedient to him, that we're doing everything necessary that we need to do uh, so that we we'll have the abilities uh, to do what God called us to do. So that means that we have to make sure that we take care of ourselves. We've got to make sure that we try as much as possible that lies within us to obey God and try to put forth an effort to do what he asked us to do. We got to make sure that we do things right, do things God's way, that as we make mistakes, <clears throat> that we get back up, that we repent, we keep moving, we keep working. We have to realize that we are created unto good works. God has called us unto good works. We got to remember that the work that God started in us, he's going to finish it. But we have to allow him to finish it. We have to make sure that we're doing everything we need to do. And then we have to make sure that we're faithful. We have to make sure that we finish strong, that we don't give up, uh, that we don't get weary along the way. Sometimes when you're in a battle, you have to step away. There, there are times that when you're in a battle that you've got to take time to eat. You've got to take time to rest this body. You have to take time to regroup. You have to take time to plan. And so in this, when we're moving and going in ministry and doing the work of the Lord and doing our gift and calling, there are times when we have to slow down and uh, we have to do something different uh, just to just kind of get a breather and, and get our minds refocused and re reestablished. Um, <clears throat> I was sharing with First Lady that my mind never stops. It, it, it does not stop. And I totally even after I finish a teaching or a preaching, my mind immediately uh, start going to the next one. And so I'm in a situation where I'm thinking all the time, I'm meditating all the time. Uh, even in my sleep, I'm preaching and teaching. And so it's a time where I, it never stops. So what I have to do is I have to make sure that all these things are necessary, but I have to make sure that I take time uh, to meditate and do other things that will calm me down. And help me to change my mind uh, as far as uh, thinking about other things that are, that are wholesome and good uh, and worthwhile. And so you have to have a certain amount of discipline. But at the end of the day, we are, the pastors, the elders, the bishops, we are responsible for making sure that the body of Christ is healthy. So the body of Christ, the church, the saints of God must be healthy in order to be effective body of Christ, we, the church, must be healthy in order to be effective, in order to produce fruit and to, and to remain 
useful. All right? We've got to make sure that as we teach and as we live, as leaders, we create an atmosphere of unity, growth, love, forgiveness, an atmosphere of giving, an atmosphere of helping one another. We've got to make sure that uh, we create among the believers, uh, these, these, these people, individuals that we lead, uh, we must make sure that these leaders are leading in their giftings and uh, that we're giving them everything that they need and empowering them to work. We've got to make sure as leaders, when we have leaders under us, we have assigned them to different several tasks. We've got to make sure that we work alongside them and make sure that the way we tell them, you know, you just can't tell them you got to love everybody, get along with everybody. You got to treat them right. You got to help them. You got to make sure uh, that we're growing, that we love each other and that we forgive each other and we're helping one another and that we also uh, we are we are. Uh, you know, giving to one another and taking care of one another. You just can't say that. What we have to do is, as leaders, the leaders that are under you, you have to interact with them. You have to be an example. You have to love them. You have to forgive them. You have to be unified with them. You have to take them alongside you. Uh, you have to make sure that you have connection and you have a healthy, wholesome relationship. You really need to like each other. You need to go further than just love each other. You need to really like each other. Uh, you need to be able to get along. You need to be able to, to have conflict to where you hash things out, uh, to where uh, if there's uh, anything come up to where you kind of get heated, then there needs to be forgiveness involved. You need to forgive one another right away so that you continue to move forward and working together. And you need to be able to give to each other. You need to be able to give to each other. And so <clears throat> this is one of the things that, that as the leader, the shepherd of the flock, need to be able to demonstrate and practice these things. Because what's happened is when you do that to the leaders that are under you, they simply pass down what you pass down to them. And so you have to make sure. And so how do you do that over and over again, day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out? How do you do that as a leader without getting tired, without getting frustrated, without missing the mark? Well, uh, it, we're not perfect, so there's going to be times when you're going to miss the mark. There's going to be times when you don't feel like it. There's going to be times when you don't communicate quite as proper as you should. There's going to be times when there's going to be some words said out of your mouth that you didn't mean. Uh, there's going to be some times when you just don't feel like being around anybody, talking to anybody, dealing with any issues, any problems. There are going to be those times. But <clears throat> here's the thing. Because of your gifting, and because of the Spirit of God is on the inside of you, you got to remind yourself that you cannot stay there long. You can't stay there long. Realize that you're human, but understand you can't stay in that situation, that mindset, that attitude long. And that's why when you are preaching, that's why Paul says, I keep under my body, lest when I preach to others, I myself become a castaway, I become unfit. So we have to understand that the word that we teach and preach and the examples that we give and all the things that we command and talk about the word of God, we have to make sure that we eat off the same table because we need in our level at our level of, of, uh, of responsibility at our level of leadership. We've got to make sure that we're eating the word of God. We got to make sure that we hear from God to practice what we're teaching and preaching. Now, I know, see, a lot of times we get caught up in the popularity. We get caught up into numbers. We get caught up into hype. We get caught up into fanfare, what people like, what they're, everybody coming together, what's exciting everybody. And, and all of that's good, but at the same time, you got to be caught up in what, kind of lifestyle and changes are you making because of what you teach and preach and so the first thing we have to do is we have to teach and preach and live by example and uh, we can't get it caught up in the hype we got to understand that um, hype come and go you know when you, you look around you we'd be excited this Sunday and next Sunday 
uh, uh, like what happened. <laughs> you know, this Sunday you have you have a congregation full of people. And the next Sunday you be like, did everybody go on vacation at one time? <laughs> And, and so you can't be moved by, you know, you have prayer and you have two people on the line. Next time you got 10 and then you have 15. And you're like, oh, the Lord has showed up moving. And the next time you got three. You're like, what happened? Did I do something? Did I say something? You're teaching in a class and you got 10 to 15 people and you're like, man, we're growing and blowing. And I mean, I mean, these brothers loving this stuff. They just love it. I see it. They bring in, they, they come in. And then all of a sudden you come and you got four people that you're talking to today. And you're like, uh, we were so excited last week and I saw momentum and I just saw so many things and I felt the presence of God and we had feedback and people were talking. And what happened? And if you're not careful, a lot of times the enemy said, it's you. <laughs> it's not you. It's not you. It's human nature. You know, it's human nature. What it does is, and this is what I learned from that, and we're talking about participation now, and people, you know, coming and participating and so forth. This is what I learned about participation. I've learned that the more people are uh, kind of all over the place with their petition, participation, the more important my job becomes and your job becomes as leaders to stay the course, to be to, to be uh, uh, stable, to be consistent, to be faithful. Your job becomes more important. Why? Because we're living in a time and we've been living in a time where people don't value the presence of God. They don't value worship they don't value the word of god which is necessary to feed their souls so that they can have a good quality of life they a lot of those things they just do not value and so somebody's got to continue to hold up you remember you remember the saying hold up the bloodstained banner somebody's got to continue to do because see what god is looking god is looking at oh can i trust you to be faithful with my word so that i can use you you to be a blessing and i'm going to also bless you and so we got to look at all of this so let, let's look at let's let's go to the to, to ephesians chapter 4 verse 12 and 14 we're in amplified all right so when we're talking about what the what the pastor the bishop the elder uh his job is to do okay so it says, verse 12 says, his intention was the perfecting and the full equipping of the saints, his consecrated people. So God has given the fivefold ministry, particular, we're talking about the elder and the bishop, okay? We're talking about the elder, the bishop, and the pastor to make sure that his job is to perfect the saints, is to make sure that the saints are equipped. So God gives the giftings to these particular leadership, to this leadership, so that they can make sure that they're equipping the saints uh, and, and that, and that they're, they're maturing. All right? And it goes on to say that they should do the work of ministering toward building up Christ's body, the church. So God intends for us through Jesus Christ to make sure that we're healthy. He wants the body of Christ to be healthy. The problem with the body of Christ nowadays is that it's unhealthy, it's sick, it's disease. It's got all these problems and issues. That is the problem with the body of Christ. It's not healthy. And when you have a body that's not healthy and is in pain and is diseased, then that body cannot function properly. And it certainly cannot do carry out the commands of God and do kingdom and serve. It just cannot. And so our job as leaders is to make sure that the body stays healthy and make sure that we are teaching and training and building up. And encouraging, building up, teaching, training, and encouraging so that the body can be healthy, so that it can do what it's designed to do. All right. Verse 13 says that it might develop until we all attain oneness. And so here's another thing. The reason why uh, the, the leaders, the, the pastors have to uh, make sure that they're perfected and equipping the saints because we've got to go into a maturity to where we're, we're maintaining uh, we're developing unity and oneness, oneness, oneness. We're all a part of the body of Christ. We all need each other. We are strengthened by one another. So we got to make sure that we develop and that we're being ministered to and, and built up until we all attain oneness in the faith and in the comprehension of the full 
and accurate knowledge of the Son of God. So there's a lot of word that we've got to learn. There's a lot of principles we have to learn. There's a lot of uh, ways of God we have to learn. There's so many things that we have to learn. And how and, and when do we finish learning? We never finish learning. There's so much. This body is, you know, we're, we have the capacity to learn a lot of things over the years. Uh, but we never finish because we're going on to maturity because God is a God uh, of, 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 of infinite and and so, you know, there's no limit. He's unlimited. And so we're unlimited in our, in our learning, but we have to apply ourselves. All right. He goes on to say that we might arrive at really mature manhood, the completeness of personality. So here again, we're talking about maturity, uh, completeness of personality, which is nothing less than the standard height of Christ's own perfection. So basically, we're, we're trying to mature and be like Christ. Because we want to, at the end of the day, we want to be able to demonstrate and do what Christ did in the earth. Remember what Christ said, Jesus told his disciples, he said, he said, I'm doing these works. He said, but you're going to do greater works. And so he's not talking about in, in, in quality as he is in quantity. Is that all of us will be able to do more together collectively and we'll be powerful and we'll be able to, 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 to affect uh, affect and effect uh, the kingdom. Then he says the measure of the stature, the fullness of Christ and the completeness found in him. Okay, and then so here's 14 and this is what we're getting to. We're doing all of this. We're doing all of this so then we may no longer uh, be children. So uh, as we look at this, we got to remember that Christ wants us to be mature. And so the, the leadership, deacons, ministers, Department heads, worship leaders, teachers. Whatever it is that you do as a leader, God wants us to come together, be on one accord, learn from him, grow and mature. Help one another. Empower one another, support one another, love on each other, do the will of God. Allow the giftings and the talents and the skills and abilities that God has given us to flow from us through the kingdom to others, even outside of the church. All right. And he wants us to be solid. He wants us to be steadfast, solid and faithful in this. Steadfast, solid, faithful. It's got to be in your spiritual muscle memory that this is what you do. This is who you are. That has to be like it has to be established. An establishment is a foundation which is there. It's going to be there. So these are the things that we have to establish as leaders. And the big question here in verse 14 is why? Why do we have to be mature and so established and faithful and unwavering and committed and all the other words that we can use? Why? So then we may no longer be children tossed like ships to and fro between change gusts of teaching. And so God is saying, look, we've got to be solid as leaders so that we don't go back and forth tossed. And, and he uses the word children, says that we be no longer be, that we no longer be children tossed like ships to and fro. You know, kids, they can't make up their mind. They want this, and the next minute they're changing their mind, and they want that, and they own this tantrum, and they own that tantrum, and they love this, and they don't like that, and they change from day to day, month to month, and then they go backwards and forwards. What they like today, they don't like tomorrow, and tomorrow they're going to like the same thing they like today, but the next day, they're not Tuesday. They're not going to. They're not going to like anything at all. They want everything new, and 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 so and so. What we have is we have people, and that's why you gotta. You look. You can't. You you gotta take. We've got to teach and demonstrate the word of God, and we've got to be faithful in that word, and we got to walk in that word, and we can't just walk in the word that we like. We can't just walk in the ways that we agree with, and get rid of all the other stuff that we don't like. We got to obey God all the way across the line. We got to obey God. 
in the things that we like that he says about us and we're supposed to do, and we've got to obey, obey the things that we don't like. That's what maturity, that's how you mature. And so we, we have to understand that we can't be tossed back and forth. So it loses the example of a ship going back and forth with the waves. I mean, when the waves come, the, the ship can't do anything but move. And then it relates here as a ship, but it's talking about teaching. So you guys, so that means you have erroneous teaching out there. You have people and you have to really watch social media. Have mercy. You have to really watch social media because social media, you have to understand a lot of these people are trying to, to, to gain followers by numbers and they're trying to do things to, to attract your attention so they can get likes or so they can get, uh, you know, so they can have all of these numbers. So they can go viral. OK. And a lot of time it's about entertainment. It's not about truth. It's not about what's right. It's not about what God says. It's about what's going to get people excited and what's going to get people listening. And so now that's where that's why you have different religions and that's why you have different beliefs and different doctrines, because everybody want to take a little bit of the Bible and put their spin on it. And take credit for it and say, this is what God says and this is what God means and this is what we do. A lot of times people, they don't want to live according to the word of God. It's plainly in the Bible what you should do and what you should not do. They don't really believe that. So they, they take it and they mix it. They mix the word with lies. They mix the word with their experiences. They mix the word with what they want to do. They mix the word with, with, with the sin that's in their life and they find a way to okay it and they push it through the body of Christ. Christ. And so if we got to make sure that we teach people and demonstrate people that this is what God says, this is what he means, this is how he says do it, and this is what the results you will get, and, and, and God is a God of order, God is a God of love, and he's also a God of judgment. And so when you don't do it like God says do it, when you do it your way, this is what you get, and this is how things happen. And so we got to make sure that we take a stand and make sure we stand. And people, can, people need to see they need to see unwavering they need to see commitment they need to see this is what God means when he said this in his word and we don't need ups and downs we don't need people trying to bend the word and teach and do stuff because uh, they they're they're trying to appeal to their flesh or appeal to the world the question is what 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 is it that you're trying to do why you you already have a large membership you already have plenty of money in your pocket why are you crossing over and trying to draw the world into the kingdom of God why are you doing it why are you now uh, compromising and doing things in the kingdom of God and saying things in the kingdom of God as a leader. Why are you doing that to try to get more followers? So you mix people up. When you do things that you know that's worldly, when you know they're ungodly, you start confusing people and you cause people to backslide. You cause uh, uh, people, uh, you start putting, uh, you, you start to, to cause a mudslide. A generational mudslide to where our babies and our kids grow up and our seed grow up and they don't have any idea what's right and what's wrong. They just mixed up. And so when you have an individual that doesn't not sure on what's right and what's wrong and, and what choices to make, when you have individuals that type mindset, then, then naturally they are free to do whatever they want to do. And that's what we create. We create, we have created in the kingdom of God a bunch of saints who are now independent of God. And so consequently, subsequently, the truth is not the truth. The truth is their truth. Whatever their truth is, whatever they believe, whatever they perceive, whatever they want to do, that's what the truth is. And that's the truth until something else come along that they want the truth to be. And they are far away from, from, from the word of God. And so now we see here that it goes on to say that tossing to and fro be, uh, between gust winds of teaching and waving with every changing wind of doctrine. Everything that they want to do that's new, it doesn't matter about uh, is it right or wrong. This is new now. Let's try this. Let's try something different. 
And it says, the prey victim of the cunning, cleverness, of unscrupulous men, gamblers, engaged in every shifting form of trickery in inviting error to mislead. These guys are out here as leaders not to lead in the kingdom, but they're out for their own welfare, their own glory, their own profit. And they want to use you. And so you and I, and I'm going to tell you right now, it's not popular to go against them. It's not popular to go against them. But we've got to stand on the word of God. So I'll be back next week and we'll be talking about, we're going to start with verse 14 because we've got to make sure that we understand that we got, we got a lot of uh, sheep and wolf, uh, wolf and sheep clothing. They're not out to help. They are out to destroy. And so we've got to make sure that we're on guard. I want to thank uh, those who are leaders that are listening to this, to these teachings, to this particular teaching. I want to thank the leadership that's here locally, that we continue to bind together, that we stay strong, that we make sure that we're not by ourselves. We're not, we're, we're not by ourselves. We don't look around and see what somebody is not doing. Shame on them if they're not doing it. But we got to make sure that we do what we do. And I want to stand and say this, like Paul says. I want you to follow me as I follow Christ. As, I, as you see me doing the things that's necessary and doing what we're supposed to do according to the word of God, I want us to yoke up, unite, and let's do it together. And let's not get weary. Let's, get not, let's not get, be weary and well-doing. You know, let's understand that not only there's a crown of life waiting for us, but we have to understand that there are blessings and there's authority that's going to be given to us before we leave this earth. God bless you. We'll see you next week.